Hi, I'm Marvin Ryder. I teach in the School of Business. I've been there for 35 years, but before that, I'm a McMaster grad of 1984. That's when I got my MBA here. I've been asked today to talk about 5G and why it's important for you. So I think the first thing you need to know is the letter G stands for generation. And what we're talking about here is a generation of internet usage. 3G, then 4G, now 5G, and in a few years we'll talk about the sixth generation or, or 6G. Uh, three things happen between these Gs. The first and most noticeable to you would be speed. In a 3G network, if you were downloading a Hollywood movie, you would start at night and it would be downloaded six hours later. Under 4G, you download a Hollywood movie and it takes about, oh, six, seven minutes. Under 5G, you would start downloading a movie and you'd get it in three to five seconds. That's how fast it is. And that's the most noticeable aspect. Second thing you're going to see is the number of devices that can be connected to the internet within a cell. So right now, the limit under 4G is about 4,000 devices that can connect in a cell. That's the space that they transmit the signal. Now that sounds like a lot, but if you believe in a future where we're going to have cars talking to one another and appliances talking to Alexa, your home device, or what have you, you're going to have to have a lot more devices connected. And under 5G, you can do up to a million in a cell. And then the last aspect of this is reliability. Uh, no, hardly anyone here has not had a situation where a call has been dropped or an internet download has been interrupted. The idea under 5G is that this should be almost seamless now. There's some built-in redundancy that they can check to see what they're doing to make sure it's just really, really reliable and you're not going to have those drops as you go. Uh, why is it now controversial is that we need to put in a new infrastructure, a new wireless infrastructure. And the key people playing in that market are the big technology firms, Samsung, Apple, and of course Huawei out of China. In case you don't know, Huawei is the second largest phone producer in the world behind Samsung. Apple is actually number three. But also in terms of the 5G uh, infrastructure, the network you need, Huawei is a leader globally. And of course, the question is, this Chinese-owned company, owned by the state government in China, do we trust them to deploy this technology? Have they embedded in their technology little ways to check, to spy, if you will, on what we're doing? And that has caused the United States to be quite concerned. And they've recently, uh, Donald Trump signed a, an executive order which limits Huawei's participation in 5G. Australia has done the same thing. Canada is saying, no, we have to do our own testing on this. And of course, we have our own challenges in our relations with China. And it's not clear which way we're going to go on this. Do we ignore a major technology provider because it might, might open the door for spying? Or do we get the best technology possible to stay on that leading edge so that we can keep up with other nations in the world? You're going to hear a lot more of this played out in 2019 and 2020.